Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and today I'm going to be doing some pH testing in my yard, a couple places in my turf and a couple places in beds around my house. I want to see what my pH is like here, see if I need to lime. Uh, typically in my area the pH is very, very low. I limed here 20 years ago when I moved into this house one time. I have not checked it since. I uh, really have put a lot of time and energy into uh, growing my business and uh, not as much time as I should have here at my house, but I'm gonna start working on that. And one of the first steps here is I'm gonna find out if I need to lime just this entire yard or if there's just some spaces that I need to lime in the yard. All I'm gonna need for this is a shovel. You may only just need a trowel if your soil tends to be a little looser, but definitely in my yard, I got a lot of clay. I'm gonna have to uh, use the shovel for that. I use the, the little thin trenching shovel worked perfect. Um, I've got some cups that I'm gonna put the soil in. I'm gonna collect four different samples. I've got my pH tester right here. That's also a moisture meter. I've had it in a couple other videos. I'll link it in the description. And I have some distilled water. You definitely want to use distilled water and uh, not any kind of bottled water because typically they put some salts and things in those and they're not uh, pH balanced. This uh, distilled water will definitely have a pH of seven, which is neutral. Uh, I don't want the water to have any effect on the reading of my soil. So with that said, I'm gonna go around four different spots in my yard and collect some soil. This is just a weedy space in my backyard. I'm just gonna cut the turf off. I don't want any organic material in this. And I probably wanna go down between four, six inches. That's about where the root zone for most plants is gonna be. Try to avoid rocks like that and put it in here. And I need enough to cover the bottom of that pH tester. So I'm gonna go up uh, maybe two thirds of this cup. And like I say, go down pretty deep here into that clay area. You can see right here, it gets more just red clay a little further down. I have built up a little bit of topsoil from uh, my weedy backyard and uh, mulch and other spaces over the years. So not quite as much clay as it was, but there's one of our samples. Sample number two is gonna be in an area that's had mulch on it for the last 20 years, has a tree growing over it nearby. I'm gonna take that top area off of it and go just below that. And this is definitely heavier red clay right here. And I'm gonna need to break that up to get that probe in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on breaking that up a little bit right now before I put it in the cup. Okay. There's sample number two. We'll have to break a few of those clumps up. This will be the third spot here. Uh, this area's had mulch on it for a very long time. You can see just a very different soil here than some other areas in my yard. I've, uh, this has only been a mulch space. I've never even planted in this area, but the soil's actually in much better shape. Make sure you're trying not to get any roots or sticks or anything in there, but there's the third sample. Okay, working on another turf area. Getting this organic material off the top and going under that. You can see red clay and it needs to be broken up some like that. That should be good enough. Sample number four. Make sure you know where your samples came from. You can put a piece of tape on here and write on it as you go. I've kind of been careful to put mine in order as I've been digging them up. So here's the four samples. It is best to take these samples when it's a little bit dry and it's very dry in my area right now. And then I am in control of the water that's in them. So what I'm gonna do here is add some water to each of these. Just let it soak in then I'll mix it in. I did add a screwdriver to the you'll need list or any kind of thing that you can mix the soil in pretty well. I probably added too much water here. Now I think it's gonna be okay. It'll hold the probe up. 
these clay parts are much harder to break up. All right, I'm gonna let these soak up this water just a little bit and firm up just a bit. I waited about 10 minutes and most of the water has been soaked up by that dry soil. I think enough for this probe to stand up in the middle of the cup. If you'll notice the probe is right at seven, right this minute, which is neutral. I actually have to put this down into this covering these three metal bands right there, just right to where they're barely covered. And we have to wait uh, about 10 minutes and I'll do that on each cup. So hopefully the glare is not too bad that you can actually see how low the pH is in my yard. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's perfect blueberry soil. And uh, that's about it. Even azaleas and rhododendrons would probably like it a little bit higher than that. It's about 4.2 right there. Um, somewhere around six is probably where I would be much more comfortable um, growing a wider range of things in my yard uh, that would thrive. And I can see this in my neighborhood. Uh, there, there's no lawns that look great. Um, this is way, way too low for lawns, especially because they are nitrogen hogs. And when the pH is this low, uh, it's really hard for them to take up nitrogen. So you can be fertilizing your lawn and not even have much success with it if the pH is this low. So there's just a lot of issues uh, down here in this land. I'm gonna test these other three now. I imagine I'm gonna get similar results. Well, I didn't think it could get much worse, but sample number two is in fact even lower at 3.8. Interestingly, the area that I said had a thick layer of mulch on it for the last 20 years where I really haven't done much, the soil has improved there over time and the pH has climbed a little bit, but it's still under five. The last sample was also 4.2. I wanted to show you, I put the probe just in a glass of distilled water and it is very, very close to seven. And that's what I was talking about. If you use tap water, it'll definitely be lower than that on the scale and have more of an effect. Um, I would like for that to have been right at seven, um, so it probably has had a small impact on it, but it doesn't really matter. My uh, soils are just absolutely ridiculously acid, whether that water had any effect on the measurement or not. So if anything, it was definitely pulling it up. So definitely gonna be adding some lime. So that's how you go about finding out what your soil pH is and then once you have those numbers, you can correct them from there. I'm definitely liming this yard and I'm liming it from corner to corner. People, typically people will lime their lawns or some, spe some small space. I'm actually just gonna take a spreader and go across this entire yard. I'm gonna shoot that in a separate video because I wanna tell you how much lime I'm using and why and the time of year I'm doing it and why and all those kinds of things. I think it requires a separate video. When I put that video up, I'll link it in the description of this one. Uh, that'll be in the next few days when that goes up. I put up a video on recently about how pH affects plant health. I'll link that in the corner of this video and in the description of this video. Uh, if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about soil pH or liming. Thanks for watching.